times the just killing a uh, simple assassination doesn't have quite the same thrill that it usually does. Uh, hello, welcome back or welcome to TIS. I am the city and you're hearing me speak again or for the first time. Whichever it is, welcome, welcome, welcome. I am glad to see you here. We are going into our rogue subclass. This one is called the Soul Eater. Should be very, very interesting. Um, has interesting magical abilities and stuff. So, without further ado, let's get into it. All right, the Rogue Soul Eater. Being an assassin is a hard job. It is not a job that allows you to live everyday life in parallel unless you are a master of disguise and clean killing. Some rogues sell their victims' souls to an eerie entity in a warlock-like pact. For these rogues, assassination is a ritual to collect souls, and they pay their patrons with this currency. Their patrons blessed these rogues with illusion powers and empowered strikes, improving their deadly abilities. Emerging from the shadows and slaying their targets make these assassins the best and most efficient in the realms. Pact Magic, third level Soul Eater feature. Your arcane research and the magic bestowed on you by your patron have given you facility with spells. See the player's handbook, chapter 10 for the general rules of spell casting, and chapter 11 for the warlock spell list. Cantrips, you know two cantrips of your choice from the warlock spell list. You learn additional warlock cantrips of your choice at higher levels, as shown in the cantrips known column in this, of this soul eater table. Spell slots. You, uh, the Soul Eater table shows how many spell slots you have to cast your Warlock spells at 1st through 3rd level. The table also shows what the level of those slots is. All of your spell slots are the same level. To cast one of your Warlock spells of 1st level or higher, you must spend a spell slot. You regain all spended spell slots when you finish your short or long rest. For example, when you're 13th level, you have two 3rd level spell slots. To cast the first level spell Witch Bolt, you must spend one of these slots, and you cast it as a third level spell. Spells known at first level and higher. At third level, you know two can first level spells of your choice from the Warlock spell list. The spells known column of the Soul Eater table um, shows when you learn more Warlock spells of your choice of first level and higher. A spell you choose must be of a level no higher than what's shown in the spells, the table's slot level column for your level. When, it, we, when you reach 8th level, for example, you learn a new warlock spell, which can be 1st or 2nd level. Additionally, when you gain a level in this class, you can choose one of the warlock spells you know and replace it with another spell from the warlock spell list, which also must be of a level for which you have spell slots. Interesting. Okay, basic spellcasting stuff. Spellcasting ability. Your charisma is your spellcasting ability for your warlock, warlock spells. So you use your charisma whenever a spell refers to your spellcasting ability. In addition, you use your charisma modifier when spending, setting the saving throw DC for a warlock spell you cast and when making an, an attack roll with one. Spell save DC equals 8, plus your proficiency bonus, plus your mod charisma modifier. Spell attack modifier equals your proficiency bonus, plus your charisma modifier. Soul Eater table, we have a le level, cantrips known, spells known, spell slots, spell levels, and invocations known. Uh, we have none at first and second level, but at third level you get two cantrips, two spells known, one spell slot of first level, no invocations. Um, you get an extra spell known at 4th level, um, and at 5th level you get an extra spell slot. Uh, let's see here, you get an extra spell known at 7th uh, level, and your spell slot level goes up to 2nd level. Um, then you get um, 2 invocations at 9th level, at 10th level you get a 5th spell known. Uh, let's see here, you get a 6th spell known at uh, 13th level, and a, you get 3rd level spells, um, uh, and you get 10th uh, uh, level, you get another cantrip known, 
At 14th level, you get a third invocation. Uh, at 16th level, you get a seventh spell known. Uh, you get three spell slots at 18th, at uh, 17th level, um, and then you get, uh, and you also get a, an extra cantrip known, and you get an eighth uh, spell known at 19th level, as well as a, a fourth invocation known. Um, spell casting focus, you can use an arcane focus as a spell casting focus for your warlock spells. Bonus proficiencies, third level soul eater feature. Um, when you choose this archetype at third level, you gain proficiency with the alchemist supplies and the poisoner's kit. Soul Eater, third level soul eater feature. You learn how to extract the soul of the dead. You can sense the last breath of any creature dying within 60 feet of you. Using your reaction, you can materialize its soul into an eerie trinket in your hand. You could not create the trinket if the de deceased creature was construct or undead. As a bonus action, you can spend your Soul Eater trinkets to enhance yourself in the following ways. Passing the Disguise Self spell without consuming a spell slot, <coughs> giving you advantage on the next ability check you make until the end of your next turn, or giving yourself 1d6 plus 2 times your proficiency bonus temporary hit points. You can carry a number of trinkets up to your proficiency bonus. Very interesting. Eldritch Invocations, 9th level Soul Eater feature. In your study of occult lore, you have unearthed Eldritch Invocations, fragments of forbidden knowledge that imbue you with an abiding magical ability. You gain Eldritch Invocations of your choice. When you gain certain levels in this class, you gain additional Invocations of your choice, as shown in the Invocations Known column of the Soul Eater feature. Um, of the Soul Eater table. Additionally, when you gain a level in this class, you can choose one of the invocations you know and replace it with another invocation that you can learn on that level. If an Eldritch invocation has prerequisites, you must meet them to learn it. You can learn the invocation at the same time that you meet its prerequisites. A level prerequisite refers to a third of your level in this class, rounded up. Hungry Soul Eater at 13th level, uh, a 13th level Soul Eater feature. You gain other ways to use your soul trinkets. As an action, you can spend them as it follows. You can cast the silent spell at the cost of three token trinkets without consuming a spell slot. And you spe your speed increase is by 10 feet for one minute at the cost of three trinkets. Finally, Mystic Arcanum of fourth level, a 17th level soul eater feature. Your patron bestows upon you a magical secret called an Arcanum. Arcanum. Choose one fourth level spell from the Warlock spell list as this Arcanum. You can cast your Arcanum spell once without spending a spell slot. You must finish a long rest before you can do so again. Very, very interesting. I like the... yeah. Very interesting on to the review itself. Very interesting um, concept of using uh, souls to, um, to kind of power yourself um, as a uh, as a rogue, and this is kind of a warlock rogue kind of multi class almost, even though it just is this is just one subclass, which is nice. Um, let's see here. I do like the story of like. Becoming a, like a pack like a war like pack lock like pack with an eerie entity by collecting souls to use for uh, that's kind of how you go through this pact. Um, you get the warlock spells and invocations at a lower at a lower whatever rate than the regular warlock, which is fine. Um, which is cool. The Soul Eater, the trinkets are pretty cool, giving you different abilities as you expend them. Um, you get the invocations, you get better uh, trinket thing at higher levels, and you get a fourth level spell. Um, it's pretty cool, um, all told. Um, I don't think it's too overpowered or underpowered. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I don't know since I don't know if there's I don't think there's any 
warlock-like sub uh, official subclasses, so I don't know how to compare it to those. Usually it's for wizard stuff, like the uh, Eldritch Knight or the uh, Arcane Trickster. Uh, I think those are the, well, the only ones um, that are like subclass half-casters. Um, for Warlock, it's a different one because Warlock is a very unique sub, uh, class. Um, but this is fine. I, I like it. Um, I'd love to see it in play, of course. Um, comment below any thoughts you would have of this, uh, subclass. I don't think it should be any other subclass. It's not, uh, or any other class. I don't think it's too similar to any other subclass. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, and yeah. Um, but um, bum bum. What else? What else? What else? Um, I am planning on becoming a professional dungeon master, kind of collect, creating my own uh, short term adventures to kind of put my content out there, um, which should be fun. Um, if you're interested in that, email me, comment down below, join my Discord server for that, and for if you want to help me for anything. Um, what else, what else, what else? I am still streaming Dragon Fable and finishing up Inmost. Then we'll go into uh, Lego Indiana Jones, which should be a lot of fun. I love Lego games. Um, previous episode of the lore crafting around the Ranger Realm Warden, which is really cool. Um, uh, channel subscription, like, comment, subscribe, share if you want to. Um, and let's see, I think that is about it. Join me next week as we do some lore crafting around uh, next week. Next video as we do some lore crafting around it. Then we'll go into the sorcerer. I'll see you guys next time. This idiot. Out.